Welcome to the Zaleski Sports Show. I'm your host, Rachel Zaleski, and today we're going to be discussing the NFL, the Milwaukee Brewers, college and high school football. So joining me now is Jason Zaleski, our sports expert. Let's go. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So Thanks Jason, for having me. Oh, that's nice. Jason, the um, first week of the NFL regular season just concluded. So what are your thoughts? Well, it was a lot of fun watching the NFL. We're, we're glad that it's back in full again. Of course, we started on Thursday night uh, with the Patriots hosting the Chiefs, and the Chiefs came away with the win on the road. Now, Chiefs looked really good. Patriots uh, did look a little lethargic. You'll have that, though, in week ones, Rachel, uh, throughout that, especially on that first Thursday night game. Uh, you'll have some of those things, and some of these teams will get it ironed out as they go. But the Patriots really looked like they were missing something and the Chiefs were missing nothing. So that's how it all started. Uh, we'll fast forward now. Uh, what do they of course, do at the stadium? What like, do they do at the stadium? What arm movements do they do? Oh, well, that's at, at the Chiefs Stadium. This okay. was the, yeah, we were in New England, though, for this one. So oh, they had their big sorry. foghorn uh, Ooh, going yeah. all the time. Okay, there, we'll ahead. move this out of the way. All right, so we've got our standings. This will be a regular occurrence uh, here on the Zaleski Sports Show as we talk about the NFL, and, and we'll, uh, we'll recap. Uh, so we'll just mention the first-place teams. That's how we'll do it, Rachel. So AFC West, Chiefs in our first place. Uh, AFC South, uh, we've got, oh, I had to do a, a double check there. Jacksonville Jaguars, first place. All right, we may not say that again. We'll see what happens there. Uh, the North uh, Steelers, and then in the AFC East, the Buffalo Bills. Bills. They're your first place team. I don't think that'll last for long, though. All right, and then the NFC West, uh, the, uh, the Rams are in first place. That might last. Uh, Cardinals didn't look that good. Uh, and we'll see what some of the other teams do. In the, NFL, in the NFC South, the Falcons are in first place. They gritted out a tough road win at Chicago. Uh, and then our, our two teams at the top here uh, did not play. Uh, the Panthers, Buccaneers were rained out by Hurricane Irma. Uh, they're going to make that game up in a couple weeks. Uh, in the uh, NFC North, uh, no surprise there, Green Bay Packers are in first place. And I figure that's where they'll stay the rest of the year. And is this correct? Dallas Cowboys. Your first place Dallas Cowboys. Big Sunday night win against the Giants. Uh, had a lot of fun watching that game. And uh, yeah, and stuff is good. Rachel, even the Vikings won on Monday night. Uh, Ooh, they beat the Saints. So uh, Adrian Peterson's homecoming to Minnesota. It wasn't and so sour. It was actually really loving. Well, except for the fact that then he, he and lost, and Sean, team lost. well, and, and he and Coach Peyton got in a, a little bit of a tiff on the sideline. So we'll see no, what happens what there. Do? Adrian wanted uh, more playing time. Yeah, well, yeah. I would too if I was him. That's NFL, Rachel. All right, moving on to regional sports. Jason, um, are the Milwaukee Brewers uh, done for the season, or do they still have it in them? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Some people so you, here in the studio want you to say that they're done. You, you brought me here as a sports expert. So here's what I'll tell you, Rachel. There's 16 games left for the Milwaukee Brewers versus five teams. We are getting down to the end. So here's how it, it stacks up. The Brewers just won two of three against the Pittsburgh Pirates. They put themselves back in contention for now. Uh, it seems like every other week we say that, and then the odd weeks we say they're out and they're done. So right now they're back in contention. They're three games behind the Cubs out of first place, three games behind the Rockies for wild card. We're just going to focus on winning the division right now. We're just going to focus on winning the NL Central. We'll worry about wild card in a couple weeks. Good 16 goal. games Good left, goal. five teams Here's how they uh, stack up. Against the Marlins, that's coming up. Big bonus for the Brewers and the Marlins. Huge. Due to Hurricane Irma, that game has been transferred to Milwaukee. That was scheduled to be a road series. Marlins are unable to play that game at their home stadium. Uh, so Brewers will host the Marlins. Marlins are below 500. Got to win those games. Then uh, Pirates. And they just won 2-3 or three against the Pirates. And they're also below 500. Okay? Then at home against the Cubs. They must win three or four against the Cubs. You've got to beat that first place team. Again, they're three games behind. You've got to make up those three games in that home series. There's a reason you, when you play at home, you've got to win. You've got to take care of the home field advantage. And then they're at home against the Reds. The Reds are also below 500. They're in last place. Got to win those. And then they finish up at St. Louis, and St. Louis is tied with them right now for second place. That could be what determines their playoff eligibility, Rachel, hmm. uh, against them. So, a lot of factors. Yep. And also, during that same time frame, during those next 16 games, the Cubs and Cardinals also play each other four times. Hmm. So, uh, Brewer fans, you should be rooting for a split in that series, 2-2. That'll take care of catching up to the Cubs by two games just with that alone. It's exciting times. Oh, thanks for your insight. That's wonderful. Yeah.
All right, moving on to college sports. So Jason and I, this past weekend, we traveled to um, UW Eau Claire to watch the Blue Golds defeat the Wisconsin Lutheran College Warriors 34 to 20 during their home opener. Woo woo, go Blue Golds. Um, so let's watch the action. Welcome to the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House, sponsored by Ho-Chunk Gaming in Nakusa. Ho-Chunk Gaming located just south of Nakusa on Highway G. Ho-Chunk Gaming, experience the difference. Let's send it down to Jason for post-game thoughts with Blue Gold's head coach, Dan Larson. All right, thanks again, Rachel. Jason here with the Zaleski Sports Show. We are here with Blue Gold football coach, Coach Larson. Coach, congratulations on the win today. Uh, tell us about uh, coming home here to Carson Park and open up with a win. Yeah, it was huge uh, for a couple different reasons. You know, uh, we had talked about it then since 2011, since Blue Gold football had won their home opener. Um, then 2011, since the team had been, you know, no worse 500 uh, going into the, the third and fourth week of the season. So for us, it was to come out and play the way we did, um, kind of feed off a great crowd and, and uh, the environment that was set there. Uh, it was huge. Talk about uh, Childs and Kalaga, um, just about uh, even on carries. Uh, was that just a matter of uh, hot hand or just want to rotate these guys in? Yeah, we, we try to rotate backs. Uh, we, we were without our, our starting guy that was against St. Thomas, Antoine Warren, and I thought those two guys did a good job of stepping up. They're different styles of runners. Um, they're guys that can get a lot better, which is an important thing for us to, to continue to make sure that they, were, they know that part of it too. Um, but I thought they did a good job of just going in there, running the ball with uh, good ball security and uh, you know, running behind their pads, which is something we talk a lot about. So, you know, please how those guys ran between the tackles. It's, it's not, uh, you know, it's not pretty football all the time, but uh, that's okay. That's how we want to play. How do you grade JT's performance tonight? Passing, running, the whole thing? Yeah, you know, probably not to be a coach, but probably a, a solid B or B plus. You know, in the, in the second uh, second quarter, we had some opportunities and, and he had some throws. He was a little bit late on his feet, were a little bit happy in the pocket. And, you know, just try to tell him to calm down a little bit and, and anticipate some things a little bit more. And uh, he came out and did it. And uh, the big thing was from a leadership standpoint, he didn't let our guys get too high. Um, you know, when we needed to make a play, he stepped up and made one. Um, you know, whether we'd like to have not had that last long run of his, you know, get called back because of a holding penalty. but. Uh, I thought overall he played a really solid game. He played the game that we needed him to play uh, with the injuries that we had and the guys that we were trying out there for the first time. Uh, Coach Wisconsin Lutheran, uh, quite a few passes today, a lot of passes defense. Uh, tell me about the defense performance. Yeah, I was really happy with just, you know, we didn't get a lot of sacks. We had a lot of quarterback turns. I thought we made him a little bit uncomfortable in the pocket. And uh, anytime you're playing man coverage versus a team that runs a lot of verticals, you know, you're, you're bound to give up a big play every now and then. Um, I think our defense coordinator, Matt Ebner, would tell you that he wished we did a little bit better job with our pass rush and keeping the QB in the pocket. But uh, we knew they were going to be a, a, a vertically stretching team. Uh, I thought our secondary stepped up and played a really big game. And you know, even that long touchdown pass they had there at the end, uh, we had guys in there to make a play. And we'll continue to get better at that. It's probably a technique thing, you know, more than anything else. But overall, I was really happy with just how they uh, kind of had each other's backs, pursued really well with the football, and um, you know, just didn't have any panic to them, which is huge. All right, guys, Zaleski Sports Show, we are here with player of the game, uh, JT. Uh, JT, talk about a uh, big 76-yard run you had uh, early in the game. Uh, for the people watching, tell them what that looks like through your helmet as, uh, as you're rolling out and heading down the field. Uh, you know, it felt great. It you know, looks about how you expect it to look, but I don't know if you guys saw, you know, our receiver out there, Darius Jones, he's the reason why we actually got a touchdown there. I uh, blocked down the field, we kind of just... He did really well. He pushed that guy about 15 yards back and made a wide open lane for me. So he actually kind of sparked that whole run, to be honest, but yeah. it was just a really good way to start the game. Time, nine seconds left on the clock, one yard left, uh, no timeouts. Uh, talk about uh, what it means to get that touchdown and, and what would have happened if you didn't get it. Mm, if we didn't get in, we were going to try our best to try to get one more snap off. We went close though. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it meant a lot. It just it gave us a huge confidence boost going into half. Everyone's really fired up in the locker room. So, you know, it meant a lot in that aspect. And it was, you know, it was pretty fun. The guys up front did a great job All right, JT, thanks a lot for joining us here on the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House. Rachel, back to you. That was our sports expert, Jason Zaleski. Thank you to our sponsor, Ho Chunk Gaming in Nakusa. Ho-Chunk Gaming, located just south of Nakusa on Highway G. Ho-Chunk Gaming, experience the difference. This is the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House. I am in the house. All right, and thanks again for UW Eau Claire for having us over at Carson Park. We had a great time. We'll be back in Eau Claire a couple times this year. To check out when we'll be back, visit our website, ZaleskiSportsShow.com. Click on the WEAC tab, and you'll get the whole schedule right there. Rachel? Yeah, thanks, Jason. 
So this next segment of our show, we talk about Sports 101, break it down a little bit. I have a really interesting question for you, sports expert Jason Zaleski. Okay. Okay. Hit me. So we're going to talk about why, or can you explain a little bit about why when the quarterback is at the line of scrimmage, Mm -hmm. because we saw this a lot last Saturday at UW-Eau Claire, Mm -hmm. um, he will stand back up again and look over to the sideline, and Mm -hmm. then they go back into formation and get ready to hike the ball. So Mm -hmm. tell me what's going on. Yeah, well, he doesn't know what he's doing. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, what, what's happening there is, and you'll see this a lot in college football, it's leaked over some into the NFL, especially though in college football. Uh, the coaches take less time during the week in game prep to actually plan against the other team. Rather, what they do is they plan alternate plays or, uh, or other designs to plays when, once they reach the line of scrimmage. So the players will get up to the line of scrimmage. The coaches on the sideline are assessing what the defense is doing. Those players have come up to the line of scrimmage. They have no intention of running a play when they first get up there. They're waiting for the coaches to assess what the defense is, has stacked against them. The players then will back off. They'll look to the sideline. Coach will then tell them the appropriate play to run, to get back under center, and then run the play. That's what's happening, Rachel, in college football, and it's happening more and more. Uh, again, they're relying. Uh, the coaches are teaching more about fundamentals during practice and leaving the actual game plan to during the game. In the NFL, it's a little bit different. In the NFL, of course, they'll, they'll go through all their practice, get their fundamentals, and those players, because it's their full-time job, will spend 40 to 50 hours a week watching film, whether it's at the training facility or at home on their iPads. But they're spending 50 hours a week watching those plays, and the quarterbacks are almost always the smartest person on that field in the NFL. They'll come up to the line of scrimmage. They'll observe the defense. They'll decide, am I in the right play? Yes, okay, hike, let's go. I'm in the wrong play, now I'm going to stand back, I'm going to tell this receiver where to go, tell you what to do, I'm going to call out a code word that maybe is letter oriented or or number oriented, something like that, that tells the running back where to go, and then back under center, and off we go. Oftentimes, um, the quarterback on a run play is flipping it from right to left, or left to right. On a pass play, uh, they may check back into a run, or uh, oftentimes when they're motioning to the receivers, they're telling those receivers, uh, here, we're, we're taking your second hot route, go with that. So the quarterback is judging that defense and deciding at that line what's the best play to run. A lot of what you said I didn't Oof. catch. So thanks for telling me all of that. But we'll go ahead and talk about that later. But that sounds like a lot of information. So thank you for letting everyone else know. Yeah. So the uh, Zaleski Sports Show, um, the big game of the week this week was the Marshfield Tigers, and they defeated the Kokana Galloping Ghosts 27-14. to And it was the induction of our newest highlight House Player of the Week, Ryan Krieger. So let's take a look at this. Go Tigers. We're here with Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House Player of the Game, Ryan Krieger. Uh, Ryan, 9 for 13 today, three touchdowns. And uh, looks like you saved the best for last in the fourth quarter. A 65-yard rip down the field. How did that feel uh, heading down to the end zone? I mean, it was it was just a great moment. Like, finally be out in the open. That doesn't happen very often to me. But the ending was kind of rough. I mean, like, my ass was starting to kick in the drive before. And it was just... I got to the end zone, I landed on the ball, and I got the wind knocked out of me. Oh, it was just, I just, it was like a bad moment after that. I mean, I was all pumped and stuff, and then I landed on the ball, and I got the wind knocked out of me. It was all rough, but uh, it was kind of a broken play, too. Was, everybody was confused, nobody really knew what was going on, and it just happened to us. Yes. All right, uh, coming down in the second quarter, uh, you threw a ball up in the end zone, kind of bounced around a little bit, and Colin Fravert uh, came down with it. Uh, what do you owe Colin tonight for catching that ball? Uh, he always gives me crap about everything that I do. He's just a funny guy to have around. But uh, it was great that finally having get this his first touchdown for varsity at least. Um, I actually didn't see it. I threw it and I got pushed down, so I didn't really see the play. But I mean, it's pretty exciting to have him have his first touchdown. That was our sports expert, Jason Gillespie. Thank you to our sponsor, Marshfield Insurance. Marshfield Insurance. Proactively monitoring your insurance, making your future more predictable. This is the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House. I'm in the house. This week, the Zaleski Sports Show is going to be covering a couple games. So the first game we're going to cover is at Greasy Park. It's going to be the Columbus Catholic High School. Dons, and they're going to be playing their non-conference soccer game against Tri-County um, Thursday at 5 p.m. So that's tonight if you're watching this now. And the second game we're going to be covering, you can catch the Zaleski Sports Show Game of the Week in Spencer when the Rockets take on the Colby 
Hornets, Friday at 7 p.m. So go Rockets. Yeah, boy. So Rockets, Hornets, Dons, Penguins. Got it all. That's a lot of, a lot of people and a lot of sports. It's a lot of stuff. So um, moving on to fantasy football. So this, um, this week, I can tell you, Jason, uh, my fantasy football team totally got spanked. Yeah. By let's see who is who am I playing? I played against yeah. um, Team Fun with Wine. So yeah. go Stephanie, you did mm -hmm. a good job picking your players this week. Mm -hmm. Jason, um, I will tell you that I should have played Kareem Hunt, and I think a lot of people probably um, who had him on their lineup should have played him as well. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. It's shoulda, difference coulda, between fantasy winners and losers, and that's the way it goes. Um, yeah, well, we had some really close games this week. Uh, team Joe Buck sucks beat Team Megahertz by less than a point. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah. All right. Uh, look what you made me, Drew. Uh, easily took care of Marshfield's Avengers, 134 to 94. If you ain't first, you're last. Cruised against Big Ballers, 103-78. Uh, and then my team, Tiger Snooze, uh, was taken down by a team has no name. Uh, it was, totally that, taken down. Yeah, it was a close game. It came down to Monday night, and uh, I wasn't able to, to really make up any ground. I think I went into that game down 10, and I finished uh, losing by 10. So, so as we take a look at the standings in the East, if you ain't first, you're last, holds first place on their own. And then on the West, uh, Shake and Bake, uh, Rachel, you're in last place all by yourself. <laughs> I'm so sad about that, but <laughs> um, you better believe I'll be playing Hunt this week. So thank you so much for watching the Zaleski Sports Show. I'm your host, Rachel, and this is Jason, our sports expert. You can check us out on Facebook at Zaleski Sports Show and also Twitter at Zaleski Sports. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we will see you next time. Go sports! Do you do feel like I do? Nope. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I can't do the Frampton uh, voice guitar thing. Wah, 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 That's the closest wah, I can get. Wah, wah. You can't do it either. <laughs> you gotta get that You're worse thing. than I am. You're the worst. <laughs>